When disaster strikes, one of the last things you're probably thinking about is your tax return. But you may qualify for tax relief, including being able to claim your losses from the disaster now and a tax refund of past taxes and an extension to file and pay taxes owed currently, as well as the possibility of getting your tax refund faster. I'm Mark Stever, Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt. And during this challenging time, I want to help you get the biggest refund you're owed and help you navigate the complexity of tax returns when dealing with a federally declared disaster. What is federal disaster relief? To help taxpayers and businesses recover financially from the impact of a federally declared disaster, the IRS has tax relief to assist during tax filing time. These include opportunities to recoup some losses on a tax return, get access to refund money faster, an extension for filing your tax return, and even an extension of time to pay taxes you might otherwise owe earlier. Because millions of Americans are affected by federally declared disasters each year, from hurricanes and tornadoes, wildfires and flooding, and many other types of disasters, this is just one area that the government is trying to lessen the damage on hard-working Americans' pockets. But the key is that it must be a federally declared disaster area. And unfortunately, just because you might have had damage after a bad storm doesn't always mean you can write off the expenses to fix your damage on your tax return. Who qualifies for disaster relief and what is an affected taxpayer? The IRS defines an affected taxpayer as an individual, a business entity, or sole proprietor, or any shareholder in an S corporation affected by a federal disaster. A taxpayer does not have to be located in a federally declared disaster area to be an affected taxpayer. Taxpayers are considered affected if records necessary to meet a filing or payment deadline postponed during the relief period are located in a covered disaster area. If an individual or business lives or works in a federally declared disaster area and incurs property damage or loss, and depending on the type of assistance, does not have the insurance or other resources to meet their needs, they can potentially qualify for disaster relief. While there are different types of general relief, there are several in the tax code ranging from tax deductions to extra time to expedited tax loss deductions. Throughout the year, the IRS updates their website so taxpayers can find the most recent tax relief provisions for those affected by disaster situations. The current list of eligible localities and other details for each disaster are available on irs.gov. For example, for tax year 2023, there were more than 50 federal disaster areas in the list. And here's a tax tip. If you have been in a disaster, a big one, and not sure if your area is in the tax qualification area, either see a tax pro or check out the list of areas yourself. Again, after you have your life back in order and start to focus on other things, financial things, see if your area is listed. And if you have losses, definitely see a tax pro. How do I claim casualty losses on my taxes? Well, due to the Tax Cuts and Job Act of 2017, between the 2018 and 25 tax years, the ability to deduct any general theft loss and any casualty loss has been eliminated unless the losses were caused by and in a federally declared disaster area and the losses were not covered by insurance. To claim the casualty and theft loss deductions when it's from a federally declared disaster area, you may not have to itemize deductions. Instead, you may be able to subtract $500 from each major disaster and add the loss to the standard deduction. In addition, some states don't use the federal government's rules and will honor certain casualty and theft deductions that are not the result of a declared federal disaster. So in short, Losses and disaster losses are complicated, but can pay big benefits on your taxes. And if not federal, maybe on your state. Do not overlook them. You claim these losses on a federal tax return on Form 1040 or on an amended return using Form 1040X, as well as Form 4684 to report exact losses from the disaster in years after you have filed. Finally, you claim these financial losses on the tax return for the year of the federally declared disaster 
or on the previous year's return for an immediate refund. Meaning, if you or your business had damage from a storm in 2023, you claim those losses on your original tax return or amended 2022 tax return or on your 2023 tax return. You couldn't claim damages from a 2019 storm on a 2023 tax return. But this is a tip not to be overlooked. The fast deducting of a qualified financial loss on a previously filed or pending filing from last year's tax return can pay immediate and fast cash benefits. Bottom line, there are two ways to claim a disaster on your federal tax return, and it's based on the type of disaster declaration. A major disaster declaration allows the direct add to the standard deduction with only a $500 deduction. The other types of eligible federal disasters are based on a subtraction of $100 from each disaster and a total of 10% of AGI from all disasters, and then adding the allowed amount to your itemized deductions. I know that's a lot to take in. It is enough to say, if you've been impacted by a big disaster and have had financial out-of-pocket losses, you need to know there are good tax rules can help you get back some of what you lost at least financially and in the tax code. What other tax benefits are there for disaster relief? Well, the IRS can extend the due date for filing individual and business returns, paying taxes, quarterly estimates, even payroll taxes for businesses. The benefits include the ability to delay any payments to the IRS with no penalties. You should include the disaster declaration number from FEMA on the top of your return. However, the IRS does look at zip codes when they receive these returns. This process is used to speed up processing and get money in your hands quicker. It's also used to suspend penalties and interest for late filing and or paying when needed. So do not play coy with the disaster rules. They are real and serious, and the IRS and most anybody frowns on trying to unfairly take advantage of them, even by accident. On a similar note, I want to clear up some misinformation I often see online. There is not a disaster relief tax credit or even IRS disaster relief payments, at least not IRS or tax return related credits or payments. Lastly, the IRS automatically provides the extended deadlines for victims of federally declared disasters. No need to file an extension form 4868. This will happen by itself. But I do recommend that just because you get extra time, you don't take it just because. If you have everything available, you should file your tax return as quickly as possible. Are there other types of disaster assistance? Why, well, yes. FEMA provides financial assistance if you live in a presidentially declared disaster area. To apply, you can either apply online at disasterassistance.gov, download the free FEMA app, or call the 800 number or you can apply in person at a disaster recovery center. To apply for additional disaster assistance through FEMA, you'll need a social security number, insurance information, a description of the damage caused, your annual household income, contact information, and bank account information for the direct deposit. Disaster aid can help with food assistance after disaster via DSNAP, as well as paying your mortgage, utility bills, credit card payments, student debt, and auto loans after a disaster. Additionally, if you're impacted by a federally declared disaster, you may be able to collect disaster unemployment benefits. If you lost your job as a direct result of the disaster, cannot reach your job because of the disaster, or cannot work because of an injury sustained during the disaster. But be aware, when you collect unemployment benefits, this counts as income and needs to be reported on your tax return. Anyone who received unemployment benefits must pay federal income tax on those benefits. It's a difficult time when things are out of your control, especially when it's a natural disaster. But I'm hopeful information about disaster tax relief can help you during this difficult time. I strongly recommend you work with a tax pro who understands the options available to you and the resources that can help ease your stress. Schedule an appointment with a tax pro at jacksonhewitt.com today to get started. And share in the comments if you have any recommendations for those going through a difficult time dealing with a natural disaster. 
And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel for more valuable information and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things taxes.